what we discovered was sort of like we opened up a, a, a black box or Pandora's box, and we realized that the mushroom identification or the mecha- the methods of identifying mushrooms, especially with DNA or other, other chemistry, is fraught with huge amounts of problems. Because these mushrooms are very similar, it, it's become very difficult to use chemistry to determine one mushroom from another. And because we discovered that 30 to 50% of the DNA sequences in databases are actually are linked to the wrong species. So the whole database that we use to identify mushrooms um, are, is just dirty data. I mean, people, people get a mushroom, they, they do a DNA sequence, they upload the sequence, they say, this is with Reishi, and it turns out they, did not, they didn't know how to identify that as Reishi, and now there's multiple sequences that, com- that are conflicting with one another. And so I know this isn't like a, a pleasant topic, but if you are trying to do something by you know good manufacturing practices, the very first thing that FDA says you have to do is you have to identify the product, positively identify the product and make sure it is what you say it is. So it's been a big challenge to for manufacturers who really want to do this correctly, um, who don't grow the mushrooms themselves. Obviously, most manufacturers don't grow the mushrooms. So they have to purchase the mushrooms typically as a dried powder, and they have to somehow identify that that is what it says it is before they blend it in and put it in the capsule. And so I can tell you that a lot of effort is being by by you know a lot of effort is being put into this by companies who really care about these details, while other people who don't care about the details aren't you know don't they're just saying whatever it says on the label I'm just going to put it on my product and unfortunately that has created a lot of confusion. Now as a researcher, what really concerns me is that over the last several decades. This has also been true of the research literature, meaning if you're a researcher in, let's say, you know, some university and you purchase something that says cordyceps on it and you use it in your research and you don't have a way to identify that that was cordyceps or which which of the cordyce- which of the hundreds of different species that are called cordyceps this one was, and you publish your data, all of a sudden now the data that's being published is actually confusing because you may have the 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 title of the article may say cordyceps you know does this in, in these cells but it turns out that those researchers may not have identified and you may have 50 articles on cordyceps and they might represent 20 or 30 different subspecies of cordyceps some of which are very unrelated to one another so unfortunately this is Taking that ancient data and bringing it to the modern era, I think a lot of people weren't as savvy with understanding the complexity of mushroom identification when they were doing research and then when they were putting products together. Thankfully, m- m- most of the species of mushrooms are are sort of similar. So, you know, shiitake, oyster mushrooms, maitake, reishi, chaga, turkey tail, cordyceps. These are very common. They're used across. They're grown and the growers know what they are. So usually those are going to be hopefully uh, on target, the right ones. Um, But it's when you start getting and start looking at, you know, more esoteric mushrooms that um, I think cordyceps is one that does fall into that category where there's so many different subspecies or even genuses that, that fall under this, this idea. So anyway, it's sort of a, it's a little bit of a buyer beware or, or a company beware um, and they really should be doing it right. And I think as we get more and more people doing it right, the, the research will get tighter and tighter and we'll know more specific conditions with specific genus and species of mushrooms than we have in the past. I think that's one of the reasons why there's been a little fuzziness in the, in the data with mushrooms.